my name is Steve Munson, and I am the Civil War Guru. And today I'm on assignment down in historic Barstown, Kentucky, at the Battles of the Western Theater Museum. And today is kind of a real treat for me, because in front of you, we have a rare, rare grouping. Now, in this video, we also uh, included the state sign where the Terry's Texas Rangers, that's the 8th Texas Rangers, engaged the Union forces in the Battle of Barstown. And in the Confederate journals in the 1880s, the gentleman that was writing it, the history of the 8th Terry's Texas Rangers, said the finest hour for the 8th Texas Rangers was the Battle of Bardstown. So in front of you, you have General Thomas Harrison's grouping. This is a Texas Oak saddle and a magnificent pair of saddlebags with a CS embossed on them. And we also have the bridle. We have his, his binoculars all grouped there in front of you. This particular saddle grouping with the bags is featured in Kenny Knopf's books, Confederate Saddles. So I got my master cameraman working the camera magic, old Kenny Rogers, and he's gonna get some zoom ins for you. But this is a wonderful grouping. So let me read a little bow on a gentleman, Mr. Thomas Harrison. Tom Harrison was born May 1st, 1823 in Jefferson City, Alabama. He moved to Monroe City, Mississippi, then later to Texas. While in Texas, he became a lawyer in 1843. He returned to Mississippi briefly to join with Jefferson Davis's Mississippi Rifles for the Mexican War. Then after the war, he went back to Texas and he became a state legislator, in the state legislature. And in 1861, Terry's Texas Rangers was formally organized into the 8th Texas Cavalry in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The 8th Texas Cavalry fought in other battles besides the Battle of Barstown. They were at Shiloh, they were at Chickamauga, they were at Murfreesboro, they were at Atlanta, Georgia, they were at Perryville, they were at Corinth, they were at Knoxville, they were in the Tullahoma Campaign and in North Carolina. General Thomas Harrison, he became general by the end of the war, after the war, he went back to Waco, Texas, where he died in July 14th, 1891. All right, we're gonna have Kenny do his magic and get you some close-ups of this wonderful Texas Hope Saddle. And you, you think, uh, why do they call it a Hope Saddle? This was a Mexican-style saddle with the big saddle horn. And Kenny will get a shot of that. And on the bridle, it has the, the Texas Star emblems on it, which is fantastic. And of course, again, on the saddlebags itself, unique pair of saddlebags. It's got what they call the Breckenridge style CS embossed on each side. All right, Kenny, work your magic and then we'll move to the other items. All right, Kenny's got a little tighter, tighter shot on the saddle and the grouping with the bags, etc. All right, Kenny, I want you to move down on the, the CS that's embossed, the Breckenridge style CS that's embossed on the saddlebags. See if you can get a good shot for them. All right, Kenny's got you a good tight shot of that Breckenridge, Breckenridge style plate. Uh, it's just magnificent. And all the, the belt buckle guys will, will recognize that, that style, as they call it, Breckenridge style. And then uh, I'll have Kenny move up on the bridle. You can just see the stars uh, on the, the halter itself.
Alright, we got you a shot here of uh, the rest of uh, General Harrison's uh, grouping here. And uh, of course, he's got his hat, and it looks like he wore his hat uh, held him back. Uh, it did have a, a binding around the edge, which is actually this wore off. And he wore this, uh, there's some pictures of him in the uh, reunion uh, photographs, and he's wearing the same hat with a the star on the side. If you look closely, you can see a, it's a, looks like a copper uh, star on the side of it. And then we have his model uh, 1859 Sharps carbine. And of course, Sharps were a favorite of all the cowbermen. And then on the bottom, uh, and, and I have candy pan around a little bit. We have a French made foot officer sword, which this is really cool to me because the Confederates working at their best with nothing. It's in a tin scabbard with the mounts. And, uh, you know, things were scarce in Texas. But that, that just screams Confederate at me. But this is a wonderful uh, grouping there. And, and while he's got that shot, I just want to make mention of the the Battle of Barstown, which is obscure and most people never even heard about it. But the Texicans have. And what they did is when Bragg, General Braxton Bragg, was here in Barstown, and he was waiting on Kirby Smith, and they were going to take the city of Louisville. And so here in Barstown, which is 35 miles south of Louisville, uh, they were waiting. Kirby Smith was coming in from Lexington, then to Frankfurt, and they were going to converge in Louisville. Of course, it didn't happen. The Union was floating guys down the river to Louisville and down, down to Maysville, and they were marching in toward Frankfurt. So there were 60,000 Union forces. And uh, Tom Harrison, the 8th Texas Rangers, they were doing the scouting from Louisville up what we call the Louisville Road. And they were uh, giving the information back to Bragg on, you know, troop movements, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they come back and had a report there with uh, General Braxton Bragg, and they said they're wearing out horses and wagons trying to get to us. As far as you can see are Union forces moving toward us, and it's three or four times the manpower that we have. So Bragg decided to move out of Barstown and to head east. And east, 35 miles, is Perryville. And that's where the Battle of Perryville uh, came into vogue. Union caught him there. But back to the Texas Rangers. Why were the Texas Rangers claimed the Battle of Barstown and won their finest hour? They were wearing out Union cavalry trying to get down here. And what the Texas Rangers did, they got on both sides of the little road. And they lined up and hid in the woods. And they wait for the Union cavalry to pass them. And then he cut them off from the infantry and surrounded them. And from here in Barstown, General Tom Harrison, at that time he was a colonel, they got two columns of the rest of their men, and they initiated a charge. They routed the cavalry all the way back. Matter of fact, half of them didn't even stop in Louisville. They were scared and ran and swam the Ohio River to get away from these guys. And the Union cavalry said they were wild Indians. They were Comanches. They were Apaches. They couldn't figure out who they were. They were dressed in unusual garb, but that was Terry's Texas Rangers. And that's why it's exciting for me, because right here in this building, all around it, within a city block, was Bragg's army. My great-great-grandfather, Benjamin Franklin Cheatham of Tennessee, he was here. So this is exciting for me to, to be able to showcase something from Texas, and this is a wonderful grouping. And, and, a, and a true cavalryman. You know, in Kentucky, we really like to think of John Hunt Morgan. Well, John Hunt Morgan was also there. And he said that they were the f most fantastic horsemen that he had ever seen. He said they could ride a horse upside down. That's how good they were. And in Kentucky, we were, we were gentlemen. We could ride a thoroughbred. Those boys rode, rode horse ponies. And they rode the fastest paints. They rode all the unique horses. And that's why they were the Calvary. So it's been a pleasure to introduce this grouping to you. And again, these are some of the fine artifacts that you never see in other museums. This is what we call Western theater. 
So for myself, my cameraman, Kenny Rogers, and the board of directors of the old Barstown Civil War Museum Battles of the Western Theater, I bid you farewell. <laughs>